The mall is within the the mall is within the campus and then the residential is just upstairs. Well thought of. I got a lake somewhere. Don't know for what. Memang banyak makanan Should be that side lah Student prices
Ten, ten net. Ini kat luar ni Oh my god, so full You gotta pay money one you know, think free ya This is why it's called haram also what the vibe is usually like uh, so I hope that you get used to this vibe and hopefully all of you will start attending more poetry open mic shows and all the other shows that are put together by a lot of people in this room actually um, hopefully we'll get to invite them to promote a little bit about the platforms that they have um, a little later today but before we begin uh, with the actual competition there are a few people that I would like to introduce that everyone should know First of all, um, let's say hi to the judges that we have. First of all, I would like to introduce you to Yan Lim. All right, I'm going to get Yan to say a few words. Uh, maybe talk a little bit about yourself. So Yan, please come here. Thank you, Em. I wasn't prepared for this. Hi, everyone. My name is Yan Lim. Uh, you can call me Yan. Um, obviously, I am here under the capacity of the Board of Trustee for MIDP Foundation. I'll be judging today's competition. Um, I am I am a communication strategist. I am the CEO of IOD Communications. It is a is a PR agency. Um, I train. I coach. I write. And I am also a mother of four, so I can see a lot of parents in this room. So I was just talking to Gina, who's sitting next to me, that you know the nature of this event, you know, uh, the parents must be so proud to see the the children, you know, competing in such a scale of a competition. So um, and Em was just saying that because of the logistical issue, uh, it would be nice if we get to experience Taylor's auditorium because it's amazing there uh, but nonetheless I hope you are going to have fun today for the uh, for the participants have fun enjoy the experience and for parents I think um, it uh, don't need to say that everyone is already very proud no matter what the result is thank you all right Thank you so much, Yan. For your information, Yan San also studies at Taylor's. <laughs> All right, um, let's invite and introduce the next judge that we have. Please put your hands together for Wang Yao from PKK TV. <laughs> Yeah, so um, just a little bit background about us, uh, we are partners. 
So um, MIDP actually runs our uh, public speaking and debate classes yeah, for our sponsored kids. So uh, today, I'd just like to say good luck to all the participants. Hope you express yourself creatively today. Yeah, hope you do well today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Wan Yao. Up next, your judge for the grand finale is Laila Tu Kadrina from Kaki Seni. towards artist development for the arts as well, uh, as well as audience development. So I've been going to school for the past six years to work with different children and I'm just so glad to be a part of this event and can't wait to look forward to what you guys have inside of you guys. So good luck. Thank you. Thank you so much to Laila to Kadrina. Next, I would like to introduce you to Farah Aiman. I have uh, been teaching English for six years. Um, current, I used to work at MIDP for a bit. Um, and yeah, I'm really looking forward to today's uh, slam. Okay, I can't wait to listen to all the beautiful poetry that's going to be staged and performed. So good luck to all the participants. All the best. Kara is always ever so humble, but she's also a poet, if I can say that. Um, all right, uh, finally, our judge is Nura Hilma. Hi guys, so I'm actually um, a staff of MIDP. I oversee the classes, so if you guys are interested in our classes, let me know. Besides that, my major, uh, my background is actually in English, uh, literature, linguistics, and I dabbled a lot with uh, theater as well as poet. So it's really great to be back here. I'm looking forward to hearing all of you. Thank you. All right, now that we've gotten to know our judges, um, I would like to say a few <laughs> words of thanks um, as well. Um, on behalf of MIDP, always it's a pleasure to organize the Malaysia National Poetry Slam, uh, but none of this would be possible without the support from Taylor's College, who is not just a partner to us, but also is a sponsor, who's been so kind to provide us with the venue for all of the rounds. Can we hear a round of applause? <laughs> We have the campus director with us today, but I'm going to keep her until the end so you can hear from her. She'll be delivering a quick speech. Um, and if you have any other questions about Taylor's College admissions and all of that, you can also get those information on, on their website. You can also get a lot of information on their social media pages, so I would encourage you to do that. Um, I would also like to say thank you to the judges that have judged the first two rounds for the day. Uh, I will not be mentioning their names yet. Uh, they know who they are, but thank you so much for being with us throughout the whole day. Um, it really is an honor to see all of young poets from primary school all the way to varsity to open category, putting their best effort and you know coming here. It's really not easy, you know, not just speaking in front of an audience, but also to share your deepest thoughts and to share that with such crafts um, and and you know skill. Um, so I really appreciate each and every one of the participants here, regardless of who we announced to be as the top three poets today. I hope that everybody walk home super, super proud of themselves because really it is not an easy process. I also would like to say that we've heard a lot, we've been asked a lot of questions about, oh, I'm feeling so nervous, uh, uh, I'm stage fright, I forgot my, my poem halfway, what do I do? And as the organizer, again, I would like to say that is very, very normal. It happens. And no matter how many years you spend doing speeches or performing, those nervousness will always be a part of you because it is the most natural reaction to, you know, doing something that you deeply care about. Um, so I hope that even if you feel a little nervous, please put your best foot forward and try your best because at the end of the day, what we truly appreciate is the effort that you put in and every single step that you take is leading you somewhere, regardless of the results that we have. And I always say this when people ask me, how do I be confident? How do I get to be so confident that I can come up in front here and perform my piece? I always say this, 
as a society, we always think that being confident means that you will be so confident in your ability to do well. People think that you will be confident when you are confident in your abilities that you will do well. But that's not what confidence is. Because for us, confidence is the resilience that comes with it, not the knowing that you will do well. So even if you don't do well, confidence is about knowing that no matter what happens, you have the resilience to get back up and try again. Even if you fail, you know that you're going to try again and you're going to feel better next time. And even if you win, you know that there's always still room for improvement. So I would like to remind everyone that be confident in your ability to be resilient. Be confident in your ability that regardless of what happens today, you understand your value, the worth of your arts, um, and that at the end of the day, all we can do on behalf of MIDP and Taylor's College is provide you with a platform to do that. And that platform is a part of the process of how you eventually go to wherever you want to go. All right, so having said that, we will be announcing the top three poets who will be going through to the grand final. Are we nervous? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I only hear the participants going, yes. Okay, I will be announcing the primary category first, all right? The first person to go through to the final round is, can I hear some drum roll? Turana! The second person to go through in the primary category is Lasha. The third and the final person who will be competing in the third round today, Nurul Ilham. Congratulations to all three poets in the primary category. Now, let's move on to the secondary category. The first poet going through is... Adina Salimi. The second person going through is... Ira Alicia. The third and the last person going through in the secondary category is... Amira Yasmin. All right, moving on to the varsity category. The first person going through is let not the drum rolls die die down. Everybody, have to do your drum roll. for the page, but it is written for the stage. That means it is meant to be performed. So you can use your best discretion, I think. Uh, no worries if you have certain pre preference. I can never say this word today. I don't know what happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> Prefer, pre preferences. Yes. It's not working. Um, and 
the thing is, um, don't worry also if you are not the, the biggest expert on poetry because the idea is we want to democratize that process. Poetry is supposed to be accessible, it's supposed to be enjoyed by every single one of us, even though we didn't study English and literature. <laughs> so, people like me, essentially, so don't worry about that. You just follow your heart based on the score, uh, based on the performance, and then you can give out your score. You will be scoring them on a scale of 1 to 10. The lowest score you can give someone is a 4. The reason is because from the point that they register for the competition up to the point they come on stage today, I think that warrants the first three marks. Okay, it takes a lot to prepare so many poems and you know to be able to come up here. So if they come here, they say nothing, they sit back, back down, that is a four, okay? So 10, if something moves you, you really like it, it's really beautiful, you can relate to the experiences, you can give them a 10. All right, and please use decimal points. As we've seen in the first two rounds today, the competition is fierce. So, and most of the way that participants went through to this round is actually based just on the decimal points, if you, if, as you've seen earlier on. So please feel free to use one to two decimal points. All right, I think, I think, that, I think that matters. Okay, now, before we begin with the actual competition as well, we have prepared a quick opening performance for you. So everybody, I hope you're excited for this because I clearly am. Please put your hands together for our dancing. Uncle. Uncle. Thank you. Hello, very good uh, afternoon, everybody. I conducted hari ni. Kalau kalau belakang sikit tak ada masalah eh. Platform for 
students and children in the performing arts to try and practice their crafts here and hopefully maybe you will perform in the big stage and don't forget us when you're popular and rich one day um, and I hope that at that time when MIDP needs like an uncle performance to so give us a discount okay, so that's all that matters all right so we're really proud to have you today um, Alright, cool. So while we're sorting out the minus one, I will leave the kids to stand here nervously and hopefully you enjoy the show. Thank you everybody. Uh, sementara kita tunggu tu, uh, nak explain lagi lah. Ya, ini sebenarnya uh, separuh daripada kumpulan. So untuk persembahan hari ini memang kita pilih daripada orang saja. Nak ikutkan uh, one course tu around uh, 15 ke 16 murid. So ini separuh yang tadi separuh lagi tu next show. Uh, so this is one of our uh, song yang kita prepare for our tirai performing uh, for the next year. Uh, itulah uh, kita pun tak ada lah last minute tapi kita try the best this is the punya first performances depan orang oh. ramai. Oh. Kita tunggu minus one Mungkin ada sedikit uh, lambat sikit Kat situ tak apa, tak ada masalah Okay, sebelum tu boleh tak Kalau kita bagi dia warming up sikit Okay Boleh 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 8 bar Setiap bulan 8 bar boleh Okay, ready 1 2 3 4 Bolehlah kita mendengar
your scores with each other. So the sacrificial poet will perform and then we will invite the judges to show your scores and then based on that, you can tell if you are scoring too low or too high and then you can adjust accordingly for the rest of the competition, all right? We will also be doing a feedback at the end of the session today. So perhaps we can invite the judges uh, to say a bit more words about what you thought of the performance after the end of the competition later. All right, so without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, members of the audience, let's put our hands together for Abigail Lee! cooking either the clams or the chicken, definitely adding a little bit of plehing to the dish. It's heat and fragrance propagating out to the living room. This is about how she came to the peninsula at 23 and had her tongue conditions to both the east and west flanks, switching between them so seamlessly, but can still hold an entire conversation with her brother, only using the word bah. This poem is about my grandmother, my lola, who left more than half her family in the Philippines but grew new roots in this land below the wind she learned all the languages. And I could never follow a conversation with her brother at breakfast, both mixing Karazan and Bisaya in their sentences, like speaking in tongues. And she blames me and all the other local Saba youth for allowing our native dialects to die out, for not learning their winding syllables and even longer Catholic prayers. This poem is about me and how I always insist to let people know that even though I was born in Petaling Jaya, my mother comes from Sabah. This is about how I still get anxiety ordering food at the local kopitiam because over there, I do not sound local, and how my blood is probably only 10% Luson, making me only 10% responsible to learn the language, and yet the only phrase I know how to say comes from that one praise song. of which I could never remember its meaning. It's about how my body is very much foreign to the rhythm of the Sumazao, but still loves to put on the Sinuanga, the traditional wear of black velvet with gold lace trimmings. This poem is about how I still manage to have some sort of genesis in this land that is technically not my home, baptized at the Sacred Heart Cathedral when I was 10 years old. This poem is beyond the mountains made for climbing and the seas made for diving. It's about how the Catholic churches are never more than 500 meters away from the other. 
uniform signboards propped up on roadside in abundance and how the best tom yum in soup can be found at Kudai Kopi Sanking. It's spicy, sari and creaminess coming together in perfect balance and somewhere in Kudat. The beaches are always quiet and the stars are always shining brighter than those in our summer day skies. And there is no Wi-Fi or cell service to distract you from the vastness of the constellations. This poem is about how islands Mamarayo Okukino from some UKM uni students. We are here in the Samanandrong, the Sabahans gravitate towards one another to form their home away from home. And there is always someone dancing the Sumazao. Sumamaraya, okukinurohingan, tundot adaw, dopiti munganditi, sumayaw om sumindin, okudi which roughly translates to, I praise God on this day, I sing and dance to Jesus. Thank you. Thank you so much, Abigail, for that wonderful piece. Uh, I've heard that a couple of times now, but every time I hear it, it is just so ever, ever so beautiful. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. I hope our judges are ready. What you have to do now is write your scores on a scale of 4 to 10. What would you rate that performance from Abigail? And for and to read out the scores, I will be starting from Farah and then we'll end with Yan. Okay, let's give them a couple of couple more seconds. We have been judged. <laughs> <laughs> It is so cute how the judges are also so nervous to judge. <laughs> okay, now let's hear from Farah. What would that what would your score be? A solid seven from Sarah Ooh. Farah. <laughs> like I told Kadrina, your score would be 7.80. One yell. 8.9 from Wanyao, clap, clap, clap. From Nura, we have a 9.9 wow. wow. Nura clearly loved that. And lastly, from Yan, we have a 7.5. All right, to all of the judges, now I can, I hope you can make a mental note of how everybody scored, okay? Calibrate and adjust accordingly because the competition has officially begun. With the primary category going first, everybody members of the floor, please put your hands together for the first participant in the primary category. Let's invite Turanya. Through my mother's eyes, 
I see a world which I have never seen before. Well, now that I've seen through my mother's eyes, it's up to me to lend out a helping hand. Okay, now let's hear 
from our judges um, again, starting with Farah Ayman, what score would you give Lasha? She's still thinking. <laughs> it was a hard one to score. A solid seven from Farah. Laila to Kadrina. A 9.2, I guess, for all the humor involved. Wanyao gave her a solid eight. From Nura, we have 8.9. And lastly, from Yan, 8.2. Everybody, thank you so much, Lasha, for your performance, and thank you, judges. Now, I would like to invite the final performer in the primary category. Are you ready for this? Yes. Yes, we are. Let's put our hands together for Nurul Ilham. Category. But before that, I have 
a quick reminder that although you are using the mic, please still project your voice, okay? Um, don't, don't expect the mic to do the work for you because that's emotion and passion in your voice. So don't expect the microphone to carry those for you. You still have to do all of the work yourself, okay? Right, so everybody, let's put our hands together for the first participant in the secondary category for the Malaysian National Poetry Slam 2023. Round of applause for Adina Salini. It's 4.35 p.m. And in Malaysia, it's the 1940s. Where minorities are crushed beneath old men's head. They say that justice is blind. But is it? When the people that we are supposed to trust defy and open their eyes, that is when injustices start to rise. In Russia, it's 7.56 a.m. In Korea, it's 9.45 p.m. And in Malaysia, it's the 1800s where wives were just the property of their husbands and marriage meant lifelong consent for sex. Girls are more than just a border deal between two families and it's the loopholes in our laws that allow that. How dare you call me kacang lupakan kulit when in my own country, I can't even be myself. They say, surga di bawah telapak kaki ibu when our law prevents mothers from passing down citizenship to the very own children that came out of their bodies. You say we are far from our colonial past, but laws like this tell us that we have no choice but to follow our husbands wherever they go. So I think time zones are really cool. In China, it's 7 a.m. In Libya, it's 4.20 p.m. And in Malaysia, it's 2010, when the Malaysian Film Censorship Board would only allow depictions of homosexual characters as long as they repent or die. In their eyes, if someone is trans, they're practically asking to get hate crime. Or if you're gay and holding hands in public, oh, well, heaven forbid. And that's the point where I am supposed to sit still, shut up, and stop asking like the good Malay, the girl that I am. But, you know, ignore the straight couple making out in the cafe. Ignore the ustads that decided to commit a hate crime today. Ignore his three rape allegations because they were asking for it. Because everyone is equal in front of the law. Is justice still blind when the masjids and the law are intertwined? Is justice still still blind when everything the law is supposed to stand for is undermined? Is justice still blind when you're looking at someone whose gender was reassigned? Time zones are cool because in Malaysia it's 2023 and people still can't see that justice took off the blindfold a long time ago. Thank you so much, judges. To move on with the secondary category, 
Let's put our hands together for Ira Alicia. The girls. When I was nine, I first started wearing the hijab, I begged my mother to chop it all off. Yeah, sure, no one would ever see my hair. I told her it was hot in there, but I just didn't want to tie my hair because I'm not like other girls. I'm not like other girls because I didn't care for beauty pageants or fashion shows, and I refused to wear anything pink or princessy because it made me want to throw up. Because pink is just disgusting and ugly. The boys hated pink, except him. My best friend, but somehow my, flutter, my heart fluttered with even the thought of him. I hated how he made me feel like a girl. That I rejected him even before he could ask me out because I'm not like other girls. <laughs> well, six years later, my heart still flutters the exact same way. I am just like other girls. Girlhood is vague and broad and beautiful. Like the girls themselves, girlhood is special. For me, girlhood is how I pursue sciences despite not having much passion in it. But the thought of being a woman in STEM just sounds so attractive. <laughs> that spending 45 minutes in front of the mirror is completely valid because I simply dress to impress myself and no one else, showing up to debate competitions knowing that at one point I'd be debating about feminism with a man that knows nothing about it and still lose. <coughs> and trying to achieve so much because I have to prove myself to my three younger siblings that they have an amazing and extraordinary big sister that they can boast to their friends about. Girlhood is about the pops of colors added to this dull and monotonous life. But if I had to choose one color, girlhood would be red. Like the bright velvety lipstick added onto my plump, lip, plump lips by two random strangers I met in the shopping mall bathroom because they said my lips look too chat. It's odd because I've never met them before, but now their kisses are all over me, are all filled with nothing but love and the essence of girlhood. I love being a girl. Girlhood is red because first you wake up to blood stains on your bed sheet though deep down you know you're still little girl you're still a little girl that went to sleep with clean underwear every night the next you're, ba you're barely staying alive trying to fight with the little devils roaming around in your uterus and in the toilet you're trying to hide those sounds of your pads when you know damn well that everyone in that exact toilet knows what it is the loud whispers asking around for someone who so happens to have an extra pad, praying to God that it has wings. Please have wings. <laughs> because wings are just better. <laughs> these experiences are unique to me and every other girl on this planet. These experiences are different puzzle pieces that make me, me. Just like how an almost completed puzzle cannot be deemed a puzzle because one piece is missing, how can I ever be myself if I wasn't a girl? I love being a girl and I am just like other girls and I will forever be. Thank you. Another very relatable one. Um, you have no idea how relatable that is if you're a man in this room right now. Uh, and I hope that does not make you feel uncomfortable because that is the reality and we all have friends and families and daughters and wives and, and, and I guess nieces if you don't have daughters. Um, and thank you so much for making something that I've never even thought of. Um, so big, uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. Thank you so much, um, Ira and Isha. Okay. Now we will move on to the scores from our judges. As usual, we will start with Farah, but just to lay her off a little bit, from the varsity category onwards, we will start with Yan instead, okay? All right, so for this category, what scores should we give Ira Alicia? Um, are you ready, Farah? All right, what score would that be? 
a solid seven. Next, we have 7.8. A solid nine from Wan Yao. 9.21 from Nura. And a clearly big fan over here, 9.7 from Yan. All right, let's move on to the final participant in the secondary category. Everybody put your hands together for Amira Yasmin. Dear 10 
to 12 years old. Can I just get a feel from the room? What were you doing when you were 10 years old? Not playing the uncle. Not playing the uncle. What did you do when you were 10 years old? Sports. Sports? Catching tadpoles over there? What else? What, we, what else were you doing? Makan sugu. Makan sugu? Oh, that takes me all the way back. Um, this little performance is really important because, uh, again, on behalf of MIDP and Taylor's College, while MMPS is a competitive platform for spoken word poetry, it's a really special place because it provides platform for students and children in the performing arts to try and practice their crafts here and hopefully maybe you will perform in the big stage and don't forget us when you're popular and rich one day uh, and I hope that at that time when MIDP needs like an uncle performance to so give us a discount yeah. okay? that's all that matters all right so we're really proud to have you today um, Alright, cool. So while we're sorting out the minus one, I will leave the kids to stand here nervously <laughs> and hopefully you enjoy the show. Thank you everybody. Uh, sementara kita tunggu tu, uh, nak explain lagi lah. Yang ini sebenarnya uh, separuh daripada kumpulan. So untuk persembahan hari ini memang kita pilih daripada orang saja. Hari uh, ikutkan uh, one course tu around lima belas ke enam belas murid. So ini separuh daripada separuh lagi tu next show. Uh, so this is one of our uh, song yang kita prepare for our tirai performing uh, for the next year. Uh, itulah uh, kita pun tak ada lah last minute tapi kita try the best this this dia punya first performances depan orang ramai. Oh. Bagi dia orang siapa betul lah oh, yeah. Jangan, jangan, jangan betul lagi okay? uh, Kita tunggu minus one Mungkin ada sedikit uh, lambat sikit Kat situ tak apa, tak ada masalah Okay, sebelum tu boleh tak Kalau kita bagi dia warming up sikit Boleh 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 Boleh
wait and see. Did any of you ever meet a child called Goldie Pinkle Sweet, who on her seventh birthday went to stay with Granny down in Kent? At lunchtime on the second day. Of dearest little Goldie stay, Granny announced. I'm going down to do some shopping in the town. Do you know why Granny didn't tell the child to come along as well? She's going to the nearest inn to buy herself a double gin. <laughs> so out she creeps. She shuts the door. <laughs> and Goldie, after making sure that she is really by herself, goes quickly to the medicine shelf. And there her little greedy eyes see pills of every shape and size. Such fascinating colors too. Some green, some pink, some brown, some blue. All right, she says. Let's try the brown. She takes one pill and gulps it down. Yum, yum. She cries. Hooray, what fun. The chocolate got to everyone. She gobbles five, she gobbles ten. She stops her gobbling only when. The last pill's gone. There are no more. Slowly she rises from the floor. She stops. She hiccups. Dear, oh dear. She starts to feel a trifle queer. You see, how could young Goldie know, for nobody had told her so, that Grandmama, her old relation, suffered from frightful constipation. This meant that every night she'd give herself a powerful laxative. And all the medicines that she bought were naturally of this sort. The pink and red and blue and green were all extremely strong and mean. But far more fierce and meaner still was Granny's little chocolate pill. Its last effect was quite uncanny. It used to shake up even Granny. In point of fact, she did not dare to use them more than twice a year. So can you wonder, little Goldie, began to feel a wee bit moldy. Inside her tummy, something stirred. A funny gurgling sound was heard. And then, oh dear, from deep within, the ghastly rumbling sounds begin. They rumble, they roar and boom. They bounce and echo round the room. The floor will shake, and from the wall, some bits of paint and plaster fall. Explosions, kababoo, whistles, <laughs> awful bangs. <laughs> were followed by the loudest clangs. Kling kong. A man next door was heard to say. Thunderstorm is on the way. <laughs> <laughs> but on and on the rumbling goes. A window cracks, a lap bulb blows. Young Goldie clutched herself and cried. There's something wrong with my inside. <laughs> this is what we very greatly fear, the understatement of the year. For wouldn't any child feel crummy with loud explosions in her tummy? Granny, at half past two, came in, weaving a little from the gin. But at even so, she quickly saw the empty bottle on the floor. My precious laxatives! She cried. I don't feel well. The girl replied. Angrily, Grandma shook her head. I'm really not surprised. Why can't you leave my pills alone? With that, she grabbed the telephone. Listen, send us quick an ambulance. A child is sick. It's number 50 Fontwell Road. Go fast. I think she might explode. <gasps> We're, We're sure you do not wish to hear about the hospital and where. They did a lot of horrid things. With stomach pumps and rubber rings. Let's answer what you want to know. Did Goldie live or did she go? The doctors gathered round her bed. There's really not much hope. No hope. No. She's going. Going. Gone. She's had her chip. She's dead. She died. <laughs> she died. What? I'm not so sure. The child replied, and all at once she opened wide her great big bluish eyes and sighed, and gave the anxious dogs a wink, and said, 
<laughs> so Goldie lived and back she went, at first to Granny's place in Kent. Her father came the second day and fetched her in a Chevrolet. And drove her to their home in Dover. <laughs> but Goldie's troubles were not over. You see, if someone takes enough of any highly dangerous stuff, one will invariably find some traces of it left behind. It, it pains us greatly to relate that Goldie suffered from this fate. She'd taken such a massive pill of this unpleasant kind of pill. It got into her blood and bones. It messed up all her chromosomes. It made her personally upset. <laughs> and she could never really get the beastly stuff to go away. And so, the girl was forced to stay for seven hours every day within the everlasting gloom of what we call the ladies' room. And after all, the WC is not the gayest place to be. So now, before it is too late, take heed of Goldie's dreadful fate. And seriously, all jokes apart, do promise us across your heart that you will never help yourself to medicine from the medicine shelf. <laughs> that was Goldie Pinkle Sweet by Roald Dahl. We are Satu Squadron. Shuts the door. And Goldie, after making 
making sure that she is really by herself, goes quickly to the medicine shelf. And there her little greedy eyes see pills of every shape and size. Such fascinating colors too. Some green, some pink, some brown, some blue. All right, she says. Let's try the brown. She takes one pill and gulps it down. Yum, yum. She cries. Hooray, what fun. There's chocolate coated everyone. She gobbles five. She gobbles ten. She stops her gobbling only then. The last pill's gone. There are no more. Slowly she rises from the floor. She stops. She hiccups. Dear, oh dear. She starts to feel a trifle queer. You see, how could young Goldie know? For nobody had told her so. That Grandmama, her old relation, suffered from frightful constipation. <laughs> this meant that every night she'd give herself a powerful laxative. And all the medicines that she bought were naturally of this sort. The pink and red and the blue and green were all extremely strong and mean. But far more fierce and meaner still was Granny's little chocolate bill. Its blast effect was quite uncanny. It used to shake up even Granny. In point of fact, she did not dare to use them more than twice a year. So can you wonder, little Goldie? began to feel a wee bit moldy. Inside her tummy, something stirred. A funny gurgling sound was heard. And then, oh dear, from deep within, the ghastly rumbling sounds begin. They rub late and roar and boom. They bounce and echo round the room. The floor will shake and from the wall, some bits of paint and plaster fall. Explosions! Kababoo! Whistles! <laughs> Awful bangs! <laughs> Were followed by the loudest clangs! Cling clong! A man next door was heard to say, A thunderstorm is on the way. <laughs> <laughs> but on and on the rumbling goes. A window cracks, a lap of blows. Young Goldie clutched herself and cried, There's something wrong with my inside. <laughs> it is what we very greatly fear, the understatement of the year. For wouldn't any child feel crummy with loud explosions in her tummy? Granny, at half past two, came in, weaving a little from the gin. But even so, she quickly saw the empty bottle on the floor. My precious laxatives! She cried. <laughs> I don't feel well. The girl replied. Angrily, Grandma shook her head. I'm really not surprised. Why can't you leave my pills alone? With that, she grabbed the telephone. Listen, send us quick an ambulance. A child is sick. It's number 50 Fontwell Road. Come fast. I think she might explode. <gasps> We we're sure you do not wish to hear about the hospital and where they did a lot of horrid things with summer pumps and rubber rings. Let us answer what you want to know. Did Goldie live or did she go? The doctors gathered round her bed. There's really not much hope. No hope. No. She's going. Going. Gone. She's had a chip. She's dead. <laughs> <laughs> She died. I'm not so sure. The child replied, and all at once she opened wide her great big bluish eyes and sighed, and gave the anxious dogs a wink, and said, I'll be okay, I think. <laughs> so Goldie lived and back she went, at first to Granny's place in Kent. Her father came the second day and fetched her in a Chevrolet and drove her to their home in Dover. <laughs> but Goldie's troubles were not over. You see, if someone takes enough of any highly dangerous stuff, one will invariably find some traces of it left behind. It, it pains us greatly to relate that Goldie suffered from this fate. She'd taken such a massive pill of this unpleasant kind of pill. 
It got into her blood and bones. It messed up all her chromosomes. It made her blasphemy upset. <laughs> and she could never really get the beastly stuff to go away. And so, the girl was forced to stay for seven hours every day. Within the everlasting gloom of what we call the ladies' room. And after all, the WC is not the gayest place to be. So now, before it is too late, take heed of Goldie's dreadful fate. And seriously, all jokes apart, do promise us across your heart that you will never help yourself to medicine from the medicine shelf. <laughs> that was Goldie Pinkle Street by Roll Down. We are Satu Swara. Alright, 
in the primary category, we have three amazing young talents who have entertained us, to say the very least. She's spending it away! What, what's going on? My head hurts. Why does my head hurt? Oh. Traumatic brain injury. Oh, what? Traumatic brain injury, which leads to chronic traumatic encephalopathy. Symptoms including scarring in the brain and damage to cells. Or maybe she's just in her head. Same thing. Where am I? Well, nobody can figure out yet. Where's no thing you want to find out? Where's getting the heck out of here? Nobody ever gives me the up. No, but. Good job, genius. Hey, and he's trying. Ugh. What's the point, man? We're stuck here, and you know it. Rather than being Miss Davies or over here, how about we get to know each other a bit more? Since, you know, we'll be for a while. I will start first. <coughs> My name is Tiffany. Of course it is. Excuse me, what does that mean? Oh, let me guess. Which hurts? I be influenza. How about you, huh? What's your deal? I bet you think you're too cool for anyone. Whatever, man. Can the both shut up? I'm trying to think here. Wow, okay. Big boy, calm down. They can't keep me locked up. How dare they keep me locked up? Ugh! Oh, if I ever get my hands on them, We can't take this anymore. Any fun of a cigarette? I don't think it's small here. Really? You concern this is a no smoking area? You? You must have some. Excuse me? What does that even mean? I mean, we seen someone like you. Cigarettes are terrible for you. I take care of my body, thank you very much. Me too! Are you vegan? <laughs> Vegans are so 2013. I won't eat things that catch a shadow. Let's make more sense. Let's not have this work. Hey guys, seriously? Do you guys not have anything else to talk about? Like whoever has us in here is going to do to us? Like getting out of here? We are probably going to dissect us to see how our rooms work. What do you mean they? They can even catch our eyes. What? Aliens are real? Well, there's always a non-zero probability of intelligent life on other planet. A non-what? It's an application of Fermi paradox. Uh, sorry, where does it speak Italian? <laughs> I want to expect you to understand that everyone is a nerd like you, okay? There's nothing wrong with your liking knowledge. We, But I thought Fermi also says that Aliens life forms, we do be interested in us since we're not advanced enough. Oh look, I don't know it all. Wait, I know it too. Literally no one would have guessed that. Can you stop being so rude? Is there any chance these aliens are like friendly? You know, eating? If they were, we would stop here right now. We can be stuck here. We get it already. No, we really can't. If we're here, who is going to feed me cats? Aww, you have a cat at home? <laughs> Not just a cat, we has 20 cats waiting on me. <laughs> How else are they going to get their food? How do you have that many cats? How can you say no to a cat? We can just leave them. Aww, just like you make something after all. It doesn't mean we can have a sucker out. Alright then. <laughs> if it makes you feel any better, cat are considered best in many major cities due to the fact that they destroy, destroy local ecosystem and wildlife. In fact, there are many places are working to eradicate the population of Americans. <laughs> that really isn't the right thing to say right now. <laughs> How is that supposed to make everyone feel better? Sorry, I have trouble communicating. Don't be bad, at least you try. Surely this will get out. Uh, we could use my food. What? 
you had a phone this whole time? I didn't know if it would work and I don't want to get Trevor's hopes up. Try it then! Who do I even call? You can go with Big Bro. He brings his gang and get us out of here. Sure, let's not call anyone can actually do something. I don't think anyone can see tap. We don't even know where we are right now. Oh, just call the cops! Okay, okay. What the heck was that? <laughs> the villain! They have played this game! Oh, too bad! That's what works! <laughs> Whatever you are! What are you trying to do with us? Oh, it's just a little shock. Nothing to worry about. Nothing like a bit of electricity to shock the system. <laughs> yes, especially good for this subject! <laughs> We're out of here. Yeah, let us go. Oh no, we can do that. Yes. No, 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 no. How else we can run our experiment? Yes, our experiment. They are important. But experiments, what do you plan to do with us? Oh, the humans. They would like to know about the experiment. They would like to know what we plan to do to them. They don't know yet what is about to happen. <laughs> Just come to the point already. Aha, <laughs> uh -huh, the point. An experiment to treat a perfect human. Yes, by using math, using our machine to combine organic data, we will fuse all of you into one perfect entity. <laughs> Wait, that what will happen to us? To fuse organic matter, we will first have to tear apart the original being at the cellular level. Then we will fuse together the DNA and treat a whole new human. <laughs> what does that even mean? That's me. You are going to rip us apart! <laughs> 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 we are well. Well, that will be a part of the experiment. But why us though? Aha! Uh -huh. We have sent five of you. Because you fit the stereotype! Wait, but I don't own the stereo. Stereotype, you first. Yes, stereotype. Each of you fit into a simplified of a human being. For example, <laughs> subject 001. Tiffany is a socialite. She has rich parents. But that's my dad's money. Wants to be popular? I mean, who would it? And... Yeah, it's quite simple. Aww. Well, I don't have to be complicated. Um, I don't think I was supposed to be a couple man. Oh, sub is zero zero two. Sub is zero zero two. Mean girl. Excuse me, what? She is a vegan. Every animal has a soul. It's a fervent socialist. Well, I don't trust the capitalist. <laughs> and seeing everyone is burning her. <laughs> yeah, and then we have subject 004. Wei. Wei is a bad boy. <laughs> what did you just call me? Who frequently skips school? We don't even school. Doesn't believe in authority. No one does me what to do. And believe that violence is the answer to everything. That will out the issue, my kids. Thank you, Norman. And then, finally, we have something here with your five. Bernie. 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 <laughs> Bernie. Tell me something I ever heard before. Who lives only in her head? Yeah, I like no lace. So oh, I say the wrong thing at the wrong time. Subject 003. 
You were selected as your invisible normal. <laughs> That's supposed to mean? That's mean that you are average at everything. There's nothing wrong with that. Never really excellent at anything. But if you go... No, I don't want to And never stood out. Well, if there is no more creation, it's time to start our experiment. Yes, I'm going to number one. Are you ready? Yes. Let's go. That's all for our performance. Uh, and you can see the aliens and the actors are yeah, okay lah. <laughs> yeah, they are good. They are good. Can I can I ask for applause, please? Thank you, and I hope you guys enjoy it. That's all from us. Our theater group from Pusat Creative Kanakana Tuanku Bainun. Uh, it's such a 
interesting piece. But the whole time I was laughing inside because the lab coat says the government of the <laughs> 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 which like perhaps has a deeper meaning uh, to the whole show. Um, that marks the end of the no, that is the second last thing that we will do. Um, to wrap up
would like to announce the result for the grand champion. The winner, the grand slammer in the varsity category of the Malaysian National Poetry Slam 2023. And the award goes to...
on stage. I will now like to invite all three winners in every category to please join our VIP and our partners on stage so you can take a group photo. So let's welcome on stage Turanya, Lasha, Nurul Ilham, Adina Salini, Ira Alicia, Amira Yasmin, Faith, Faith is already here, Sabrina, Yash, Kairun Misha, uh, Muhammad Ayman Hafiz, and Willing to join us on stage. Can we please get our VIPs in the center? I see. Okay, so get them around them. to invite 
invite Amy, who's been the project coordinator from the start, to be <laughs> Judges, uh, you may take leave as well as the VIP partners. For the rest of you, I would just request you stay because I would like to invite Raja, Paulina, and Jack to talk a little bit about their open mic platform because, again, we really truly believe that it's important for you to keep practicing and to keep performing. So let's hear about all these opportunities that await for you out there. Let's welcome Raja to talk. <laughs> Spaces. Uh, we have open mics every month. We have every month we have poetry showcases, music showcases. We publish scenes. So anything and everything that we can get our fingers into, every pie we try to do it. So please reach out to us. Uh, follow us on IG Jalan Dalam at Jalan Dalam underscore. Uh, we are we are working on a scene right now that's uh, slated to be released uh, in Q4. So another couple months. So if you guys feel like you've got some stuff that you would like to submit, please do. Uh, else, just follow us and see when the next show is happening. The next one is 26th October, at the KLCD Art Gallery as part of our Arts and Culture Festival. Uh, yeah, that's about it. So keep creating, keep performing. I had a really good time. Everyone is super talented and interested in all. Thank you. Thank you so much, Raja. Thank you so much, Raja. Let's invite Jack. Clap, clap, clap. Everyone to my So, uh, been doing this for eight years, uh, and I can't uh, emphasize enough about reading. Um, <laughs> he agrees with you. <laughs> so, uh, after finally accumulating experiences and also confidence, uh, this November. Uh, I'm opening up a class, a writing class, but it's in VM. It's more of a page thing, but you can also apply to your to your your craft. So it it'll be it's, it's more of a beginners class. It's called Siri Seni di Tokosu Sajak bersama Jack Malik. It's about the history of uh, the history of Malay poetry. Uh, so. We started uh, with, uh, sorry, in in Malay poetry, there's only, there's traditional poetry and modern poetry. So traditional poetry is your Gurinda, Pantun, uh, Shahil. Sajak is under modern and the only uh, form, uh, which is is actually free form, and we don't have any like Bangka or Haiku so, uh, sort. So it started in 19, 1930 and up until now. Uh, we have a lot of uh, evolution and compare it to Indonesia. Indonesia chose to cut off from their Pantone traditions. However, Malaysians, we evolved. So we started as a proto Saja. It still looks like a Pantone. So yeah, this is where you're going to learn from my class and whatnot. And um, and uh, you know, I will also teach you how to write uh, metaphors because I think that's one of one of the cheat codes as for poets. <laughs> metaphors and line breaks. You master these two. Halas. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's physical, uh, but yeah, but maybe if online, maybe I'll in the future. You can you can follow my uh, Instagram page, uh, Jamali underscore PR, or follow my artist collective, uh, Project Rabah. Yeah, all right. Thanks, Sam.
as an educator, I can say the question as to whether or not the class will go online is if there's enough students, it can go anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. All right, uh, last but not least, Paulina. Hi, everyone. Uh, so I am the co founder of Hush and Step. Uh, we and are co Co-founder and co-founder and co yes, co-founder, co-founder of Hush and Snap, uh, which we do in partnership with Rex KL at Rex KL every month. And um, our goal: we are open to all, whether you're fresh or you're an experienced or Thai like Jack, um, you're welcome on our stage. Our goal always is to provide a safe space and a safe stage for everyone, every community, um, every age, every point of view. Um, so I'm actually having a bit of a, I just want to thank MFB for having us uh, um, today, as well as I'm having a bit of a proud mama moment because from last year and from this year, there are performers that started, who, you know, performed the first time on our stage. So to see them here today, full, full circle is really, really amazing. Thank you so much. All right, thank you so much. That wraps up the Malaysian National Poetry Slam 2023. Thank you.